upon you as we turn for the hearing of the scripture reading this morning. It will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 22 verses 8 through 10. Once again the scripture reading will be taken from 2 Kings chapter 22 verses 8 through 10. The Bible reads Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan who read it. Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought back word to the king and said, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Moreover, Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hekiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it in the presence of the king. May the hearers 
of God's word and those who abide in his will be blessed by him. Amen. 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 songs that he sang for uh, let us in this morning and we're also thankful for brother Bobby Lyles who led us in prayer and our associate minister uh, brother Derek Kahn reading the word of God this morning 
You know, as, as, I, as I was coming into the building, uh, as I was opening the door, I heard birds chirping. And, and, and that says to me that spring is coming, amen? That says to me that things are looking up, that if the birds are singing, we should be singing too, amen? Amen. So, uh, kind of on that line, don't forget, next Sunday is Daylight Savings. A reminder, I'll say it later, it'll be in the announcements. Um, you're supposed to lose an hour. Turn your clock ahead. If you go to bed at 11 o'clock, set it for 12. Uh, otherwise, you come to church and you're going to uh, uh, be an hour behind. You may be finished and gone. Uh, or if you turn on and you'll be getting ready to tear up your TV or something because you can't get us, it's because we may have already been on. But you can replay with the live stream. Let us realize this morning that God is good and God has given us so very much. I want to share with you scripture reading uh, this morning from 2 Kings. Uh, I'll pick up where uh, Brother Cobb read earlier, beginning at verse number 11, 2 Kings chapter 22, 11 through uh, 13. And there the Bible says, when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, uh, Achim and Sump, the son of Shaphan, uh, Echor the son of Milkiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Aziah the king's servant saying, go inquire of the Lord for me and the people and all Judah concerning the words of this book. And he says that has been found for great is the wrath of the Lord that burns against us because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. I believe that the most important thing that we can do in life is to know God's word. Amen. Is that all right, church? All right. All right. You might get a doctor's degree. You might become a philosopher and all of the other stuff, but make a stop first and understand what God has to say. Ironically, many today do not know God's word. Our lesson today will illuminate what happens when we ignore God's word. The title of the message this morning is, Have You Found the Book? Have You Found the Book? You see, as we read from the text, there was a book that was lost. The lost book. What was that book? It was a book of the law. It contained Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It was God's word. In the 18th year of Josiah, as he's reigning in Judah, he started out at the young age of eight years old, and I'm sure his mother and some other folks were helping him out. But in his 18th year, as they're about working on the temple and as they went to the temple to, to actually get money because they wanted to repair the temple, they found the book. I want to ask the question, why was the book lost? And, and as we notice, uh, he read from this book. They didn't just find it and throw it down, but let us answer the question, why was the book lost? The book was lost because 
the people had lost their way spiritually. Many of the kings before King Josiah led the people astray. There were many, but let me just give you a snippet of Manasseh. In 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Now Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And it says, He did evil in the sight of the Lord according to the abomination of the nations whom the Lord disposed before the sons of Israel. Let me give you another example of a king that was before him, just the first two. Ammon in 2 Kings 21, 19 through 20. The Bible says, Now Ammon was 22 years old when he became king. Uh, of, and he uh, reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulamet, the daughter of Haraz, of Jephthah. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh, his father, had done. You have a piling on of evil leaders, bad people who have perverted and who have changed things concerning the will of God. The people had been led astray. They had gotten totally away from God. They were accustomed to worshiping idols and false gods. They worshiped Baal and Asherah and uh, the host of heaven, that's the stars, the moon, and all of those. They had even put an altar for them in two courts of the house of the Lord. They practiced witchcraft, divination, and they dealt with mediums and spiritists. In 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 3 through 6, the Bible mentions that. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10, the Bible had given a strict warning. It said, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who uses divination, or one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whosoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. But here, God's people, God's leaders, had brought those things into the house of God and had caused the people to worship all kinds of idols. They were lost, or the book was lost, because no one was seeking it. The book was lost because no one wanted to hear the truth. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 155, salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. When you're running away from God, you don't want to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. When you're ignoring God, many folks don't want to know what God has to say about what they're doing. Again, but we ought to be aware. The psalmist also said in Psalms 119 and verse 2, How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all of their heart. It is far better to obey God and to listen to God. The book was lost because, as I said, no one was seeking it. The book was lost in the house of God. Of all places, it was lost in the house of God. Let me tell you that it was supposed to have been by the Ark of the Covenant in the holy uh, place. But instead, it had become lost because the temple was in shambles. God's holy place had been defiled. It was a bad situation. 
and they found this book. You, you know, we ought to go to the house of God more often. Amen. <laughs> they went there not looking for the book, but they found the book. Uh, they found it in the house of God. In 2 Kings 22, 4 and 8, when they got there, the, it was handed to them because the high priest had found it and he said, read this. And when they began to read it, uh, they became very much upset by what they read. They happened to be reading from Deuteronomy 28, 29 and, 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 and 30 where God is saying and, and telling them their that they need to stay to the covenant, need to be true to the covenant, you will have blessings or you will have curses. And he's giving a prophecy ahead of time that if you don't do this, I will drive you from this land. And so it's coming to fruition that it's just about time for ba Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, to come and to deport them away. It's nearing 586 uh, BC. And so as we look at that from that context, we can understand then that even though they weren't looking for the book, they found it in the house of God. I want to share a few things with you. You will be surprised what you will find when you attend church. How's that? You will find love when you attend church. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You'll find some love when you attend church. You'll find somebody that's got some love going on with them when you attend church. And it will help you to be able to love better. Amen? Amen. You will find some peace when you attend church. In John 16 and 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Uh, he says, But take courage, I have overcome the world. You will find a new way of life when you attend church. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. You will find some folks <clears throat> that used to be cut-ups. You will find some folks that used to be dangerous and injurious. But now, they're calm as doves. You will find that there are some people in church who have changed their lives. Amen, church? You'll find salvation and forgiveness of your sins. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter said to the crowd there, Peter said to them, Repent, each of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You'll find some folks who have had their sins forgiven. They still have some issues they're working on, but their sins have been forgiven. They're on their way to glory. And, and they haven't gotten there yet, but they're on their way. Amen? Amen? When you attend church, that's what you'll find. I want to talk about losing the book. <clears throat> you can lose a lot of stuff. Anybody ever lost keys? Anybody ever lost something? <laughs> we lose stuff every day, isn't that right? But let us understand, you don't want to lose the book of God. Okay, uh, because here's why. You know, sometimes you can lose something. You might even lose money. And it was like, oh, man, you know, I wish I had that $10 that I lost. Somebody else is having a good time on that, you know. They figure they've been blessed when they found it. But <laughs> you live through it. But when it comes to the word of God, we need to understand this, that losing the book does not excuse you from the accountability to it. You lost $10, well, it's gone. Somebody else got it. 
Josiah's he read, or as it was read to him, was convicted by the things that he heard. When he heard that these people were going to be punished, when he heard that they were going to be taken from their homeland, he was upset. He tore his clothes. You see, some people can hear something and they always say, oh, sister, sister so-and-so need to hear that. I think I'll send her that message today. They never put it in their own lap. They never bring it home for themselves. But when he read it, he applied it to himself. He realized that I have a problem. He realized that I'm going to be punished. And so he tore his clothes. He took responsibility as a king because he sought to hear it. Verses 14 through 20. He sought to hear more of it. And he told, uh, he told them that God would show the king because, uh, because of his actions uh, as he went to hear more. And he went to someone who had the ability to uh, receive messages from God. And he was told that, you know, because you've been tenderhearted, because you repented, and because you encouraged the rest of the people to repent, he says, you're not going to have a part in this. That's what was told to him in verses 14 through 20. You'll go to sleep with your fathers. Uh, but the, he was so impressed and touched by it that he went on to make many, many reforms. In 2 Kings 23, 1 through 27, he destroyed the idols. He tore down the high places. He even reinstituted worship and observance of the Passover. As we look at this, we see how far they had gotten away. They were not worshiping God. They were not doing the things that God had told them to do. Now, folks, I want you to know that we've been going through a pandemic. I want you to know that we've been dodging a virus to just save our lives, but we still need to glorify God. Amen. We still need to worship God. And, and, and we don't need to be missing in the ranks when it comes to serving God. Amen. Because God holds us accountable. Amen. We too should be convicted when we hear the word of God. In John 16 and verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, but I tell you, speaking of the Holy Spirit, it says, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, Jesus is speaking, he says, the helper will come, will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you, and he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. We all need to be convicted Amen. by the word of God. As the Holy Spirit shares the word of God with us, we need to be convicted by the things that we hear, the things that we read in the word of God. Here's why. In Hebrews 4 and verse 12, the Bible says, For the word of God is living, is active and is sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as division of the soul and of the spirit and of the both the joints and the marrow and is able to judge the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is able to get into your mind. The word of God knows why you do what you do. Jesus says they do this because their deeds are evil. They, because your heart is hard. The word of God will convict us if we will listen to it. Those convicted by it will never be the same. It demands change. Just as Josiah changed, just as Josiah made changes, we need to make changes also. You can tell when someone's been convicted by the word of God. Yeah. They, may have been, they may have been a cursor, Someone who cursed like a sailor, but now 
edifying words come off their lips. Amen. They may have been drinking uh, alcohol like it was Kool-Aid. <laughs> but now they refrain from it. Why? Because they have been convicted by the word of God. Amen. Because they know that God would have them live a higher standard. They may have been someone who creeped and who cut out on their wife and family, but now they are a family person, a family man, and a one-woman man. Amen? Amen? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Now they do right men. They do what <laughs> they're supposed to do. Amen? Amen? Here are, as I get ready to close the lesson, here are some reasons why we should believe and obey the book, the Bible. We should never, as was in their time, allow the book to be lost. Allow the book to not be ever present in our mind. There should never be a time when we are not going by the book, God's word. But let me tell you, just because you have a book sitting on uh, your table, the Bible, if you never open it, it's lost. Amen? Amen. Just because you got a Bible app on your cell phone yes. and you haven't opened it and read it, it's lost. Amen? Amen? Just because you have three or four different versions, if you haven't opened the book, the Word of God, it's lost to you. Amen. Only when we open the Word of God and read from it do we gain something. Here are some reasons why. We must believe and obey the Bible. Number one, because it is God's inspired word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17, the Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequately equipped for every good work. Not only that, in 2 Peter chapter 1, 19 through 21, the Bible says, So we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The problem we have today is too many of us are trying to take the place of God's will. Well, I think, well, I believe, it's my opinion. Yeah, you know, well, I heard so-and-so say. It says that it is not of any private interpretation. Yeah. It also says it is not what you think, it's what God thinks. Yeah. Yeah. Holy men in the past spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You read in the Old Testament, you read in the passages and it says, and the word of the Lord and the word of God came to Isaiah. The word of God came to Jeremiah. It is saying that God gave them the word. They heard the message and then they spoke what they heard. God has given us this. The product of the Holy Spirit bringing all of the revelation. At this time there were only five books. We have 39 today. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Put together so that we have the total revealed word of God and the will of God. Not only that, we should believe the Bible because it displays perfect unity. Do you realize that this book had over 40 different authors? Some of them were farmers, some of them were shepherds, soldiers, fishermen, Physician even wrote some. And this book came to us over a period of time of at least 1,500 years. And, and the beauty about it is, it's unified. From, from the beginning to the end, 
It has a central theme and a message. You know, I can't write something today and get it the same tomorrow. <laughs> 1,500 years. 40 different people. You've ever played that game where you have a message and you whisper it in one ear and the next person whispers it by the time they get to the other side of the room. It's totally different than what was said. 40 different authors writing spoke the same central theme and message. Amen. Amen. Christ is central throughout this book from the beginning to the end. And so then we know that it was not man, but it was God. In Psalms 12 and verse 6, the Bible says, The words of the Lord appear as silver tried in a furnace on the earth, refined seven times. In Psalms 33 and verse 3, the Bible says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. Let me give you something else. For those who have scientific minds, the word, we should believe the word of God because the Bible is scientifically accurate. It is not a science book, but when it speaks things that relate to science, it is scientifically accurate. Let me give you an example. For many years, people believed the earth was flat. Galileo come, came along, of course, and he espoused a different theory, which said that the earth was round. But centuries before Galileo wrote his thesis, guess what? God had said that the earth was round. Yeah. In Isaiah 40, verse number 22, it says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. God said, centuries before Galileo even was born and thought of it, that the earth was round. It took a long time for man to catch up to the science that God had already declared. Amen? Amen. Let me share just one other point with you in regards to that. There's something that's called the oceanic continental currents, paths in the ocean. A man by the name of Matthew Murray became the father of oceanography, and he discovered the continental currents that are in the ocean. It's like highways, it's like paths. The currents flow a certain way. And I haven't read all that, but I understand some of that. Okay, but here's the thing. He got the idea for that because he was real ill and his son was reading to him from the Bible and he read Psalms verse number, chapter eight and verse number eight. And he was intrigued by it and he went out and searched and confirmed and found out that there were these currents because God had said it way before anyone knew it. And here's what the scripture says in verse 8 of Psalms chapter 8. The birds of the heaven and the fish of the air, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. He was intrigued by these paths of the sea and he discovered continental currents in the ocean. The word of God is accurate when it comes to scientific things that are mentioned in it. I'm going to give you one more and the lesson is going to be yours this morning. Also, we should believe because prophecies in it came true. They have been fulfilled. There's only two that we basically are waiting on. That is the final judgment and Christ to return. But as we read the New Testament, we find that so many of these prophecies from the Old Testament have come true. In Luke chapter 4, verse 21, Jesus is 
reading from Isaiah 49, verse number 8, and he says, and he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus stands up, reads from the scriptures, and he says, today this scripture, and he's reading the Old Testament, has been fulfilled in your hearing. Not only that, we find that John 13 and 18 talks about a fulfillment of Psalms 41 and 9. It says, I do not speak of all to you, but I know the ones I have chosen, but it is uh, there. That scripture must may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. It's saying that Judas is going to betray him. Again in Psalm, uh, John 19 and 28, it talks about there that uh, where Jesus said, I'm thirsty. Again, the psalmist points out Psalms 22 and 12. After this, Jesus knowing that all things had, um, and this is John 19, 28. It says, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. John 19 and 36, for these things come to pass to fulfill the scriptures. Not a bone shall be broken. This goes back to Exodus 12, 46, Numbers 9, 12, and also 1 Corinthians 5, verse number 7. It was about the Passover. The Passover lamb was not to have a broken bone, or they were not to break a bone. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, the Bible says Jesus is our Passover. The scriptures have been fulfilled. The scriptures have been fulfilled. And these are just a few reasons why we ought to believe the word of God. We ought to believe the word of God because, uh, one, we're going to be accountable for it whether we lose it or not. We're still going to be accountable for it. We ought to believe the word of God because it has unity, it's scientifically accurate, because prophecies have come true, and we ought to believe the word of God because it is inspired by God. So here's the last thing I want to leave with you. Why don't we read the New Testament? Now I know some of you are probably on a reading plan. Maybe you're reading the Old Testament and the New Testament. But whenever I tell someone to start reading the Bible, I tell them to read the New Testament. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and then keep on going and read all of the things. And the reason I tell people that is because we are living and God holds us accountable for the New Testament. Amen. And so I want you to know that first. But why don't we, all of us, all of us that are in the auditorium right now, start to read Matthew. And, and you can call me up, Brother Snow, I'm on chapter 2, I'm on chapter 10. And, and let's read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We, it does no good to have the book laying down somewhere. Does, does no good to have it as an app. Read it. Read it and get to know God's word. That's how we will obey God and do his word. Have you found the book? It will lead you to Christ. As you read God's word, you can't help but find Jesus Christ. Why? Because Christ is the answer for all of our problems today. We have to come to believe in him. We have to come to uh, repent of our sins because we're convicted by the things the Bible teaches. We must be willing to confess him before men, be buried with him in baptism, and then we have to live a faithful life looking unto Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith until death. And then we will receive the crown of life. If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, I want to encourage you, why not come and put Christ on in baptism? If you're here this morning and you have been very lax in reading the word of God, why don't we get back to reading the word of God? Why don't we find the book once again. Amen. Because at one time the book had a lot to say in our lives. Amen. Let's bring it back. Let's find the book and let's make it active in our lives. May God bless you.
keep you as you be together, stand and sing. I really love the Lord. Well, don't you know I really love the Lord? And you, you don't know what He's done for me, Lord. opportunity that you have given to us, Father, that we may come together, Father, as one to serve you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we come at this time, Father, to lift with humbleness of hearts, Father, giving you the, the, the praise, glory, and honor, and the reverence, Father, that you so uh, deserve. Father, we just thank you so much, Father, for allowing us to come together in the spirit of love and the spirit of service that we might, uh, that we might be in your presence this day, Father, that we might worship you this day in spirit and in truth, and Father, that we might sing praises to your wonderful and glorious name. Amen. Father, we thank you ever so much, Father, for your blessing, for your, your love and your, your grace and mercy upon us, Father. We just ask, Father, that you will continue to bless your children, Father, as we seek to do your will, Father, as we seek to get better day by day in our service to you. Father, we ask that you would provide us with the love that, that, that we need, Father, that we might make a difference uh, in, our, in the lives of those that we uh, come in contact with, Father. Help us, Father, to be more like Christ. Again, Father God, we come at this time asking that you would be with the long family, Father, their prayer request to live a God-fearing life, Father. Help them, Father, to, as Brother Snow mentioned, Father, help them, Father, to just stay in your word, Father, and, and, and that would be enough, and Father, that would help them, that would guide them, Father, that would develop them and strengthen them, Father, in their walk with you. Yes. Father, we thank you ever so much, Father, for your blessings upon them, Father, as you have extended to them your traveling grace. Amen. Father, we're grateful, Father, that they had a, a, a safe travel there and a safe travel back home. Thank you, Father, for being so wonderful and kind to them. Again, Father, God, we come at this time asking that you would be with those who 
I want our prayer list continue to be with Sister Roxanne Barrymore, continue to be with Sister Ewing, Father, continue to uh, uh, be with my brother Sean Rogers and their health concerns. Father, we know that you're able to lift them up. We know that you're able to restore them to their health, Father. And we ask, Father, that you would do so. And we know, Father, that you do things always after the counsel of your own will. Again, Father God, we just ask that you would be with so many who are still uh, battling uh, COVID. We ask, Father, that you continue to look down upon uh, our family members of this country, Father, as many are, are, are growing tired, Father, many are carrying burdens, Father, and just uh, just loaded down with, with stress. Amen. Father, we just ask that you would uh, be with them and that you be with us, Father, and just help us, Father, to know, Father, that you uh, are still in control. Help us, Father, to trust you. Help us to know that you are one who can still that you would remove the pain that we are experiencing, that you would take away the stress that we are uh, battling with, Father, that you would help us, Father, to just have that peace and have that comfort once again. Again, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our coming together, Father. We just pray, Father, we have been encouraged, that we have been strengthened, Father, that we have been renewed. Thank you ever so much for Jesus. In his name we do pray. Let us at this time bring our hearts and minds to partake of the Lord's Supper. Thank you. some through COVID. We thank you, Lord, because you came down from glory. You gave up your life for a sin-sick world. And we have to realize when we remember the Lord, it's not just Sunday, it's seven days a week. It's 24 hours. That was a powerful message by our, our minister that we should yeah. read that book. The words don't jump out of the book. We have to actually read it. We thank him because he came down. He, he suffered and died. His body was broken. His blood was shed. And we love him for it. Because now we are a royal priesthood. Those who took his word and believed it. We're going to read our Luke. 22, starting with verse 19. Then he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And let us pray for the bread. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for that great sacrifice that you gave for us. We pray, dear Father, as we take this bread, which is your precious body, that we would do it with a clean heart, clear minds. We offer this bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 22, verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Let us give thanks for the cup. Your Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, that you came down from glory, that your side was pierced, blood came out, 
cleanse us all, dear Father, and we thank you. We pray as we take this cup, which is your shed blood, that we do it with a pure heart and pure mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. come to another portion of our worship service where we give to the Lord. And you think about that, give to the Lord. It's not that he needs what we got. It's just showing that we appreciate what he did for us. He gave his very best. And I pray that we're not giving God's change, but we're giving him our best because of the love that he's shown for us. Let us pray for the offer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for giving us life and strength, our very health. We pray, dear God, that we give of our money that would be used to further your kingdom, dear Father. We pray that you would bless all who give, all who wanted to give but didn't have. We offer this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name, write my name on the road. Oh, I've been changed, I've been changed since the Lord has lived in me. And I These are the announcements for Sunday, March the 7th, 2020. And I'm just going to read the prayer requests. They've already been prayed for. Uh, but the prayer request, request listed is uh, let's keep our sister Roxanne Barrymore in prayer. Let's also uh, keep all the families and friends who are battling COVID-19. Let's also pray for our brother Sean Rogers uh, for his health and also for Sister Alima Ewing for her health as well. Uh, if you want to add anyone to the prayer list, please continue to contact our church secretary, Sister Faye Allen, at 313-977-5434, or at Sandra Allen 730 at yahoo.com. Or you can uh, post it on the website, on the prayer wall, on our website, uh, for the church. And that's um, reference to churchofchrist.org. Uh, donations and cash and offerings can be made through the Cash App. Uh, it's dollar sign reference COC or uh, on the website at PayPal or through the website at, again, uh, reference to churchofchrist.org. Or you can come here and uh, contact our brother Ryan Kitchen and use the Clover machine for your credit or debit card transactions. Brother Ron Kitchen Okay. Brother Ron Kitchen can be reached at area code 313-350-6453. Again, let's remember, let's keep in mind that Sunday live stream service is at 10.30 a.m. on every Sunday. And they also have Wednesday adult Bible class at 10 a.m. And that's via Zoom or web link. You can also contact, again, Sister Faye Allen, the church secretary, if you need 
information of how to participate in the Wednesday adult Bible study. Uh, Sunday youth Bible study is at 3 p.m. Please contact Brother Derek Cobb for Zoom access uh, to the, the uh, youth Bible study. Um, youth Bible study also it says uh, Sunday at 8 p.m. via Zoom again contact with Brother Derek Cobb. Let's keep in mind that um, as Brother Snow mentioned earlier that this is the week that we go to daylight savings time and so we're going to spring forward so you're going to turn your hour your clock one hour ahead so that you will be on time for all the uh, things that you need to do uh, mainly uh, for church next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, also in reference news, uh, there will be a marriage class at 3 p.m. and that will be via Zoom uh, 2020. That's today, Brother Snow. Uh, that's, that is today. And that's via Zoom. Uh, again, that's at 3 p.m. There will be a Sisters Bible class via Zoom at 10.30 a.m. Uh, on the 13th. And then on the 14th, there will be an elders, deacons, and leaders meeting at 3 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, on the 20th, uh, there will be a ladies' spring tea, uh, What's in Your Cup? And that's at, uh, fast from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., and that's via Zoom information uh, will be given later. Um, Charles, your phone went off, so I don't have it on, on here anymore. <laughs> he gave me some information to uh, pertaining to that lady's tea uh, as well. But again, that's on the 20th. Also, we have in here, um, we have uh, Reference Church of Christ. It's, again, it says the marriage retreat, and it's a um, virtual Zoom edition. It says uh, a vaccine for your marriage, and that's from Proverbs 16:24. And that will be from May the 21st to the 22nd, 2020. It says, join us. It says, guest speaker will be uh, brother and sister uh, Tanya Wilkinson from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the cost per couple will be $50. And it covers, the it covers the retreat material, souvenirs, and prizes. It says, please register by contacting brother and sister uh, kitchen at 313-350-64. Five four, or Brother Sutter Stokes at 248-894-4286 uh, by Sunday, April the 11th, 2020. It says pre- 2021, I'm sorry. Um, Pre-registration uh, payments can be made through the Church of Christ Cash App at, again, Dollar Sign Reference Church of Christ or contact Brother Ron, Ron Kitchen for other payment options. We also have in here a message from W, I mean MWCI Memorial Donation Fundraiser, and uh, it's from it's to give a memorial donation to W to MWCI today in honor of our of, of your loved ones. Call us now and add and add your lost loved ones to the list to help the social the school at the at at at, at the time. For more information, email uh, Crawley is C R A W L E Y M I at G L I S dot net. Call or text area code five eight six two six zero nine three six three or 260 North Broadway, Mount Clemens, Michigan. Again, that's the, the, w, the MWCI Memorial Donation Fundraiser. Okay, so you want to honor your loved ones and to give uh, honor and to make a donation, please keep that in mind. And that's all the announcements that I have at this time. If you bow with me, let us go to God in the closing prayer. Our Father, our God. We come, oh Lord, we come thankful, we come honored that we could come together, Lord, as a church, Lord, on this Lord's day that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for the message that was preached today, oh Lord. 
we want everyone, Lord, to remember the book, Lord, to do the things, Lord, that, that you would have us to do, Lord. Just to be mindful, Lord, that we need to continue, Lord, to stay steadfast, Lord, in your word, and just to encouraging others, Lord, to do the same. We thank you, Lord, for this day, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the message that was, that was preached, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to be with all of those loved ones, Lord, who have asked, Lord, for help. We ask, oh Lord, for those who are sick, for those, Lord, who are recovering, for those, Lord, who are just having problems in their life. We just thank you, Lord, at this time that we can come, Lord, and just ask upon you, Lord, to do the things that we need for you to do, Lord, that you are an awesome God. And we love you, and we thank you, Lord. We humbly pray this prayer in our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.